Attention all passengers. Attention all passengers. Yes. The express is about to conduct a warp jump. Uh oh. All passengers, please gather at the main hall. Okay. I repeat. The express is about to conduct a warp jump. I heard you. All passengers, please gather at the main hall. After I explore. Coffee. Oh, that's Himiko's room. And that's my room. Gather at the main hall. Hey, there she is. Uh, there you are. Wait, this is your first trip. So that should be double the excitement, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm ready to go. That's the spirit. <laughs> I was excited the first time I experienced a warp jump too. But I'm used to it now. Don't worry, you'll get used to it too. And before you know it, you'll be a mature and dependable <laughs> passenger just like me. I'm sure you the are. The first step is to grab a hold of the root cause of your anxiety. You can just grab something like that. Got it. You really got it, huh? The second step is to focus all your anxiety on that point. <laughs> Transferring consciousness. Okay, I'm already for I'm ready for step three. Seems like you're a natural. It's not easy to reach this level of enlightenment. Now for step three. Yank out that anxiety and cast it away with all your might. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let's play along. Really? I've never been able to do it successfully myself. What does it feel like? Like all your worries have been swept away? Not really. Can't talk to her anymore. Uh, let me do something here. Nope. It's already good. I was going to raise the music, but... There's Pom Pom. What's wrong? You look like you were about to say something. Oh, I think I know what you're going to ask. You've come to the right person. Mm -hmm. About the Express. Oh, you want to know more about the Express? Sure do. I'm glad. After all, it's an important companion of ours. Uh, about the history. The Astral Express was a tool created by Akivili the Trailblaze, who used it to transport themselves and the Nameless across the galaxy. It is rumored that there are other vehicles like it, but the Express has no such records. The when nameless. I found the Express, its memory had been severely damaged, memory. with much of its valuable information lost. All I know is that the Express is an aspect of creation built by Akivili themselves and used to travel the cosmos. As for how it was built and how it was damaged, I do not have an answer. All right. The Express is traveling on a route that the Trailblaze once embarked on. The names of some destinations have been lost, but the first and final stops were both at Pagana. Akivili's home world. That's where we he died. We speculate the Astral Express started its journey from Bagana, stopping at each destination along the way before returning there for its next journey. However, the appearance of the Stellaron has caused a delay at each stop. Hmm. Hmm. There's a legend in the galaxy. The heart of Akivili themselves lies in the core of the Astral Express, providing it with the power to travel between worlds. But I found no evidence of that aboard the Express. 
Besides, the Express existed before the Trailblaze fell. There's no way they could have had two hearts, right? Right. However, it is likely that the Express possesses some sort of mechanism to transfer power from the Trailblaze. It wouldn't be possible with a normal path strider. About the Aki. fallen eon, deceased Trailblaze. Their passing is still a mystery, but of all the known eons, Akivili was the closest to mankind. In the data bank aboard the Express, it is recorded that they walked among the mortals, adventuring, fighting, and celebrating with them. Although they were an eon restrained by the Prima Mobile, Akivili enjoyed a freedom what similar is that? to us mortals. Oh, the. They were different from most. But their passing came so suddenly that it was thought they were killed by another eon. I don't believe that to be the case. Yeah, that's the, the knowledge of the future or something. Knowing their destiny or something like that. About the galaxy. <laughs> the galaxy is endlessly vast. I wouldn't know where to begin, especially when you ask me like that so suddenly. Um, about its nature? <laughs> I've been to many different worlds, yet I still know very little about the galaxy, simply because it's too vast. As for its nature, there are a few theories that I can share with you. Sure. The most popular is probably the Cosmos Tree Theory, proposed by Xandar, emanator of erudition and the first member of the Genius Society. He compared the galaxy to an enormous imaginary tree, with its leaves being individual universes. Okay. Therefore, only eons who draw their energy from the imaginary, and emanators who are blessed by eons, can travel through the spaces filled with imaginary energy. That's why planets where civilizations exist are so similar. Let me think for a second here. Okay, so the, ima the the imaginary type is is something connected to the to the eons. Interesting. Right, the emanators are the the chosen of the eons, ranked down from the eons. And because of that, they can travel through. Space is filled with imaginary energy. Okay, makes sense. And that's why planets where civilizations exist are so similar. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. However, the theory has its flaws. Elias Salas, the 56th member of the Genius Society, invented remote detection, disproving that the imaginary is unique. This shook the foundation of the cosmos tree theory. There are other theories as well. The stretching theory, the heat torch theory, and the parallel imaging theory. The Riddlers claim the galaxy is just a dream, and IX's followers seem to like that claim. I love this. I love that the, the game is not throwing you a definitive explanation for how everything works. Right off the bat, you know. I love that there is, uh, like, mysticism and... and Mythology, and, and 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 different beliefs, that that makes it very, very cool in my opinion. I like that a lot, on a setting. So, eons are the most mysterious like beings in the galaxy. All we know is that they ascended from the form of intelligent beings. As for the how and why. Even the geniuses over at the Genius Society haven't the slightest clue. Okay. Upon ascending to Eonhood, that being gains power over the paths, free to choose the allocation of imaginary energy however they wish, while suffering the restrictions of the Prima Mobile. So I'm assuming the imaginary energy is like the most powerful energy in the universe, or something like that. Or maybe the most abundant. Um, gains power over the paths. I'm not sure what that means. 
The Eon of Destruction seeks only to destroy the universe, while the Eon of Erudition wants to find the answer for all that exists. Meanwhile, the Eon of Preservation continues to forge walls, and the Eon of Enigmata devotes itself to obscuring all that is known. A cloud of mystery shrouds the eons. I heard Madame Herta recruited a team to try and solve the mysteries about them. She did. Compared to the eons, the factions are much easier to understand. Mortals with the same objective gather together to practice their understanding of eons and paths. Okay. Many eons are unreachable, but the factions are close to us. After Akivili trailblazed across the galaxy, people became aware of the existence of other worlds. Gradually, more people started trying to use the power of the eons to travel between worlds. Okay, that's cool. So, Aki was like, Azim. The Interastral Peace Corporation is a good example. They worship Klopoth, the Eon of Preservation, but somehow became the largest economic entity in the galaxy. Klopoth? Okay. Uh... Another example is the Genius Society. There are no shortages of eccentrics like Madame Herda who dedicate themselves to scientific research under the protection of the erudition. All right. These factions possess the same power as us to voyage between worlds. It would be hard to travel through the galaxy without them. How about the paths? The birth of an eon gives rise to a path. The nature of the paths remains a mystery leaving us to draw an analogy in a way that mortals can understand. It's a philosophical concept of sorts. The birth of an eon gives rise to a path. Okay. Okay, so a path is basically the uh, uh, philosophy of that eon. And that's why the eons have control over paths. Okay. I mean, I'm not sure control is the right word here, but... I know what I mean. A person is considered to be on a path when their will overlaps with that path. If the person has a strong enough will, they can draw power from that path. Those who can do so are called path striders. So, it's kind of like faith, but it's not faith. It's will. And if the will aligns with with that. All right. So, I mean, it's still based on belief, right? There's no will without belief. Um, but the belief itself is not the important part. You could have different beliefs um, guiding someone to the same will and they'd be on that path. All right. Path striders possess extraordinary power, but are still insignificant compared to the eons. I bet. Like a drop of water in a vast ocean. Sometimes eons will bestow a mortal with their power, making them an emanator of that eon. I should mention that once a path is open, it cannot be closed, even with the fall of its eon. Oh. That is how we are still able to travel across the stars, despite Akivili's passing. Oh, so you're literally only able to do that um so literally only what trailblazers can do that all right that's interesting i mean what does it even mean for an eon to die Okay, a lot of answers and a lot of questions still. Trailblaze is our mission and the source of strength that powers the Express to travel across the galaxy. About exploration. Explore the unknown world to continue our journey ahead. Okay, understanding. Understand the local culture and immerse ourselves within it. Sure. Establishing. Establish a connection with the new world. Rejoice with it and share in its fears. What? 
establish it is establish a connection shouldn't it be called connect then hmm oh <laughs> there is another one called connection connect worlds together carving an endless path sure that sounds super weird but sure Um, no more questions. I mean, I still have a lot of questions, but none that you can answer, apparently. Uh, Welt. This is your first time experiencing the warp jump, so a little discomfort is unavoidable. I love his voice. If you're really anxious about it, I can stay here and have a chat with you. I mean, I wouldn't mind that. About... Everyone on the Express? Uh, who would you like to know about? Uh, Himiko. <laughs> She's the owner of the Express. We joke around calling Pom Pom the conductor, but everyone knows Himiko is the boss. It all started with her encounter with the Astral Express, and they haven't been apart since then. She's extremely passionate like a, a burning sun however she remains mysterious most of the time once in a while you feel that she's burning herself out trying to accomplish her dream man this voice actor is so good not only his voice is amazing but uh he's really good only someone like her is worthy of the astral express why I think Himiko's vision of her whole life revolves around uh, a very important dream. Hmm. Pom Pom. To be honest, I don't know when Pom Pom appeared. Uh, I think it was before I came to the Express. No, wait, maybe it was after. Pom Pom is like the spirit of the Astral Express. Mm. Whenever anyone on the Express needs help, they will appear immediately. It would be ill-advised to underestimate them. Okay. Okay. Pom Pom is terrifying <laughs> when they get angry. Yes, it's terrifying. All right. I kind of want to see that just out of curiosity. About Dan. Dan Hung is a lonely child. He may appear distant and cold, but his heart is kind. Perhaps he's the way he is today because he spent so much time on the run. Sometimes he reminds me of myself when I was young. He used to work at the Xianzhou. We don't know what he's running from. He once told me that he didn't know either. All he knew was that something was chasing him and that he had to run. And that's kind of frightening. So he boarded the ship of a troop called the Morning Actors and escaped the IPC. After a while, he made his way to the Express and he's stayed here longer than anywhere else. Nice. He's very useful. Don't worry. No matter who or what wants to hurt Don Hung, we won't let them. Those who dare attack members of the Astral Express should be prepared to suffer the wrath of me and Himiko. Yeah, I bet, I bet Welt is really powerful. I wouldn't want to face his wrath or anything. About March 7th. Why is she called March 7th? Oh, maybe that's the date they found her. Ah, that could be it. But that's really weird. Why would you date... <laughs> Why would you name someone the date that... A date? Why would you name, some, name someone a date? Doesn't matter the, the event. Uh. <laughs> Did Himiko tell you about March 7th? Um, she was trapped in ice, floating through space. We happened upon her and rescued her. Okay, trapped in ice. So she wasn't just floating around in nothing. Uh, still, still, I, I'm not sure if she's human. It was a unique type of ice known as six-phase ice, a substance that adheres to imaginary law, meaning that external forces cannot change its form. 
Okay, so it's a, a special kind of ice. So maybe she is human. Maybe the magic ice kept her alive. Whoever sealed her inside the six-phased ice, no matter who it is, did so either to protect her or banish her. Interesting. I believe she had been floating through space for some time. Interesting. So she could be like Superman. About the bomb. It's impossible to trace the origins of this phenomenon. When it's observed by humans, or should I say, once it begins to affect the physical world, it's already too late to reverse. Oh boy. So it's the cancer of all worlds. It's a phenomenon. It's already too late to, reserve, to re reverse. It's like a sudden storm that appears on a calm ocean. This phenomenon causes the smooth journey through the expanse to be filled with dangers. Okay, so, so like an, an earthquake. The mechanism whereby this mutation and corrosion spreads is the Stellarons. Oh, okay, so the Stellarons are not the thing itself. They are the mechanism through which this thing spreads. Um, mutation and corrosion. Okay, so, so it is like a cancer. Okay, so there is something that happens in the universe that causes a mutation and corruption that spreads. And that thing occurs through the Stellarons. All right, I get it. It promulgated rapidly, like cancer cells. So the International Peace Corporation named it the Cancer of All Worlds. That's a very dramatic name. And not clear enough. In other words, that's a bad name. They are the army ruled by the Eon of Destruction, yeah. Nanook. As Nanook's followers, they stand against all life and civilization and execute the will of destruction, disseminating chaos and calamity. Their actions cannot be explained by reason, because their only motivation and purpose is to destroy. Okay. Uh, the fragmentum is that uh, corruption, right? Fragmentums are a phenomenon of corrosion. Heck yeah. The mainstream school of thought is that Stellarons catalyzed the appearance of fragmentums. Uh... Okay. But they are not related to the same corruption of the Stellarons, right? All matter and space that comes into contact with the Fragmentum will be turned into Fragmentum creations. Okay. However, you don't have to feel too burdened. At the very least, the current state of the Stellaron in your body is very stable and will not cause distortion to the outside. I don't know, maybe... Maybe they are then. Maybe the Fragmentum... Is the corruption of the of the Stellaron? That's not clear to me, but it doesn't matter much. All right, all right, all right, all right. We're done with March. Can I talk to my boy? Why is he not there? Yo, there's a meeting. Sir? Hmm. Okay. I think we are ready. <sighs> you took long enough. But at least everyone's here now. Where? I mean, he's in his room. He won't be here, so just leave him be. Oh. Oh yeah, take these. What? 
a tiny bonus from the conductor to the passenger. Think of it as an investment in your future growth. All right. Oh, that's the, the ranking. All right. Uh, level two. Or my levels, I should say. Is it? Hold on, hold on. Okay, everyone. No. Hurry up and find a place to sit down. Try not to be like March. Always running around the express like a headless chicken. Pom Pom's going to start the final preparations for the jump. Hold on. I'm, I'm not ready. Today is yesterday's tomorrow. I mean, yeah. Friends. Lever wards. Yeah, that's it. Um. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm level nine. Come back here, pom pom. The face he makes. About Pom Pom's story? <laughs> Quit being a nuisance! I'm working! Cool. Alright. Hey, a ticket. Level 8. And level 9. Alright, Pom Pom. Let's do this thing. Wait. Where's March? Okay. <laughs> 